A new report from the University of Southern California's Race and Equity Center says Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts in North Adams is one of the top public institutions in the nation for serving African American students well. But leaders there say there's still a lot of work to do to assure those students stick with the school nestled in a small majority white community until graduation. Michael Obashan, MCLA's Assistant Director of Diversity Programs, and Christopher McDonald Dennis, Chief Diversity Officer, discussed the news with me in the studio. The first thing that I thought of, and I think we all did, was we were pleasantly surprised, but we were surprised because we have been working on our graduation rates, but we also know that we're a work in progress. So for us, we were like, oh, okay, we're excited that we've been recognized for some of the work that we've been doing, but we know that we have a lot more work ahead of us. Yeah, and Michael, for you, you're now the Assistant Director of Diversity Programs, mm -hmm. but you know the college intimately from the inside because you graduated in 2011, right? That is correct, yes. Was MCLA, uh, how would you describe the diversity on campus when you attended the school? When I attended MCLA, it, MCLA was a completely, I wanna say it was a, it was a, a different place, a, a different feel. Um, the, the, the wants and the needs were, were kinda the same, but not as um, immediate. It was it, it was a completely different atmosphere um, compared to what it is now. Meaning, you feel like there are it's a more inclusive campus now, or what do you mean by a different feel? Um, a different feel, as in one, there was it was a lot less uh, students of color on campus. We, it was easy for us to find each other, uh, whereas now with with that population that's growing, um, it, there there is need for more programs and initiatives and with needing that now it's more of it's more pressing especially with the political climate and mm -hmm. everything and um but so yeah it was with the political climate and everything is just a, a different a, di a different atmosphere so for the report itself really four key findings that it looked at mm -hmm. it looked at whether an institution's percentage of african-american undergraduates matches the overall population um, in the university's home state, so Massachusetts' home state, right. which not a huge benchmark there because Massachusetts is a very, you know, majority white state overall. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it also looked at if the college enrolls the same percentage of African American men and women as the state, uh, as all racial groups nationwide, so mm -hmm. much wider on that one. Um, which is approximately 56% across country of females and 44% men. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that one sort of jumped out to me because it seems quite high. I mean, I grew up in the Berkshires. I remember when MCLA was North Adams State College, had friends who attended the school. And so we're talking probably 20 or so years ago. But I remember being on campus and it was a very white place. Right. So for you, Chris, and I know you're relatively new to the school too, but hitting the ground running here, I'm sure. What's it like for you on campus? You know, it, what's interesting, so our first year class right now is 30% students of color. And what's been interesting is how many students of color who are upper class students come to me and they say, what did you do? And <laughs> which is funny because I've only been there for eight months and it's like, it's actually not me, but I'll take the credit. But they... Um, there's a palpable difference. I think that admissions, our admissions staff have just really been wonderful and they really have been going into places that we would not have been generally thinking of. We just don't stick in the Berkshires. We go to Boston, we go to Springfield, we go to New York City. I think part of what's been going on is that New York State now does allow the same tuition discount as Massachusetts. So that has really allowed us to have a really vibrant, diverse student population. I was really pleasantly surprised for me as um, a person of color myself, um, married to another person of color, to say, wow, on campus there actually was this vibrant diversity. Um, because I wouldn't have thought it, you know, the Northern Berkshires. But do you find, for, you, for yourself, when you were looking at MCLA, was diversity something that you took into account? Was it something that you were, were curious about or wanted in a, in a school? That's a great question because my reasoning for going to MCLA was had nothing to do with 
diversity or how many people of color actually attended that institution. Um, that's something that didn't cross my mind. I, I, in, in Bo like living in Boston, growing up in Boston, there was there was always uh, diversity within our, our classroom. I wasn't the only, you know, person of color within the classroom or like from elementary up until high school. Um, so that thought never really crossed my mind. You uh, mentioned a few moments ago that campus climate, what students want and need has changed a bit. Mm -hmm. Do you think that diversity matters to students now? Do you hear that from them now? Oh, of course. Um, that is the main reason. Students want to go to campus and see themselves and other people. They want to see someone like them in faculty and staff and in administration. And that, that, so because of what the world is today and our political climate, I think that is something that's in the forefront of, of our students of color's brain when picking a college to go to so they get this sense of community um, when they get to campus. And so when I was looking at colleges, again, I, it, was, it was a completely different time for me. Um, diversity wasn't on my brain, like it wasn't on my mind and it's until I got to campus. Mm. It wasn't something that I needed to think about until I became, got to a campus that was a, an all white campus. And I was, I really was looking at myself as, wow, there is really no one here like me. And that's when the wheels in my head started turning. Like, mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. what's happening on campus now to, to change that, to make it a more inclusive place? Well, one of the things, I think that my hiring, I'm the inaugural chief diversity officer. I've been there for eight months. And I think the importance of a chief diversity officer is that reporting to the president, I'm really able to really uh, help systems talk to each other. So Michael does amazing programs. He works one-on-one -on -one with students, but there really needs to be someone that holds the institution accountable, that says, are we really creating the type of environment where all students can thrive? So right now, as the report's author said, um, those are great indicators, but campus climate is not one of them that they're looking at. So campus climate is something that we're now looking at. So we're great, we have people, but what, are the, what is their experience on campus? And as we were driving down, Michael and I were talking about, um, you know, the need really to listen to students mm -hmm. and to say, what is your experience? Uh, their reaction to the report was kind of like, Okay, because they, that wasn't Did their, they get yeah. the numbers right? Is that what you mean by okay? No, they just, to hear that we were a top school for black students, um, b when they hear that, they, of course, are thinking of, then why am I the only black student in a number of my classes or and my field club or something like that? And things like that. So for them, that was not their lived experience. So that's why I made the comment that this is a great um, report for us, saying that in one realm, we've done some good work, but we really have a lot of work ahead of us. And so now are you working together? I know one of the things that you're doing is collaborating with people outside of the campus, say the Pittsfield community, for instance, working with high school students and things like that to, I would imagine, work on closing that gap for what you're saying. Yep, but we are, well, Michael and I work very, very closely together, um, really around helping um, students know that there is institutional change, but also, um, I always say, kind of the grassroots and then the institution coming together um, to really make change happening on campus. And so what's next for this process? Um, I would say what, with us is just to keep collaborating together. It's been a, an awesome um, time with having Chris on campus, really pulling all our things under one under one umbrella. So it's, it's, our campus is really mission driven with diversity and inclusion and there are many different departments that are doing it and we're having, you know, different, different departments doing um, diversity initiatives, but it's like, where can we get everything under one? So all the information and communication um, is authentic and um, effective for our students, for our staff and faculty on campus. And all of it's great work. It's just, you know, we're hearing it from different areas and we're trying to really centralize it. And um, that's the work that we're, that we're doing now. And 
and along with that, creating more initiatives on campus. And just like Chris mentioned, we, for me, for my work, I really like listen to the students. I think that's where a lot of my ideas and um, initiatives come from are from the students. So technically, it's really the students that have all the great the, the great ideas. It's what is their lived experience? What is something that they need to support them? Uh, on campus to help them succeed um, academically and socially on campus and after they leave and graduate um, and go out into the professional world. What, what, what are the skills and uh, skills that they need to help them survive? Mm -hmm.